Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm bringing you my honest, non-spoiler review of Ghost Rider issue number one from Marvel Comics. This just released today at the time of this recording. In this video, I'm gonna give you my thoughts, the very basic plot, a couple details about what's going on in the book without doing any major spoilers. So right off the bat, I'll say that it was only okay. I did like it, it was definitely enjoyable, and I'd say worth the buy, at least for this first issue. It ended up being something that I didn't quite think it was. This is a double-sized issue, so you got 40 pages in total for the price of $6. It's a pretty good price, um, and the artwork overall was pretty great. The writing was only decent. This is written by Benjamin Percy, who's writing X-Force and Wolverine right now for Marvel. There's definitely some really creepy moments in this issue with Johnny Blaze going crazy, thinking that he's going crazy, seeing different things, so it definitely seems like it's going to be some sort of horror title, but this really was kind of a self-contained story, and they did use the 40 pages in a good way. They used those 40 pages to tell a self-contained story that will probably end up affecting the run later on, but not too much. We still don't really have an idea of who the main villain is, or much of that at all. As for what actually happens in the issue, I'll tell you guys just a little bit without getting into spoilers. It is focused around Johnny Blaze, who's on the cover there, really awesome cover by the way, by Kyle New. He's found himself in some sort of town where he's got a wife, he's got two kids, a good job and everything, but he's gotten in a motorcycle crash recently and since then he's been uh, seeing a therapist. The whole issue is basically narrated by him talking to his therapist. We see different flashes from that to his day-to-day -day life, how he's reacted to um, the fallout of this motor cr motorcycle crash that he's gotten into. And throughout the issue, you start to wonder, what about Ghost Rider? What about the spirit of vengeance? He really is just a family man for a while. So that really got me confused. Like, is this actually what has happened to Johnny Blaze in recent years? I didn't pick up the last Ghost Rider run, which was like a really short one. I think it lasted just like seven issues, which was a couple of years ago. So I wasn't too aware of where Johnny Blaze as a character had been left at the end of that run. Previously, he had been the King of Hell when Ed Brisson's previous Ghost Rider run started. Um, so I don't know how that wrapped up, but it definitely leads into this in some way. I would say this is good for new readers. Um, I could call myself a new reader. I mean, I've read Ghost Rider before. I'm familiar with the character, but I hadn't read the previous run. It still was a pretty good jumping on point. But like I said, you'll see by the end of it that everything that happens in the issue gets thrown out of the window. So my best tip for reading this issue, if you haven't already read it, is just to keep in mind that you have to read through till the end. Even if it might seem just a little bit boring, which it kind of was for me um, once I was like about halfway through, I didn't really understand where the story was going or why Johnny Blaze was in the situation that he was in. I felt like I had missed something. By the end of it, you'll fully understand. And it really comes full circle to set up the this ongoing series, um, but this first issue, like I said, was kind of self-contained in this one oversized story. I do want to talk about the artwork for a second. I think the artwork was really well done. It was by Corey Smith. His like facial expressions, his characters are pretty basic, but there were different like body horror elements in this issue, different flashes that Johnny Blaze would see, kind of like breaking the barrier of this perfect life that he thought he had, um, are super well done. Kind of gave me like a Mortal Hulk vibes, how Joe Bennett used to draw so many different body horror or splash pages. It was a little bit like that, and it seems like Corey Smith is going to get more and more time to shine as this ongoing series continues. He's never been that big of a name, uh, but he has done some pretty cool stuff for Marvel, and I think he's going to get better and better um, the longer that he stays on Ghost Rider. We see the, um, the, I think it was the FBI getting involved in a couple of pages. It looks like they're kind of teasing what could be the main villains, or at least the people trying to track down Johnny Blaze in upcoming issues of the run, but for the most part, it's kind of a standalone story. Just a couple of plot threads and new characters that were introduced that are probably going to end up uh, being a big part as the issues go on. I always give you guys something out of 10 for these single issue reviews though. This one was non-spoiler so I couldn't give too many details on the actual plot itself but for this issue I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. I know that doesn't sound super great. It was just because it was a little bit misleading at the beginning. I thought that it was going to be a completely different story than it was. It almost seemed like it was just going to be could become like a boring family man comic for a second. I was like this isn't Ghost Rider. When are we actually going to get to see the, the spirit of vengeance, it ended up coming full circle by the end and actually made me really excited for it. You just got to read till the end of the issue. The only other problem I had with it was that it was kind of a self-contained story like I've said many times already, um, and it didn't feed in too much to what's going to actually happen in this ongoing series as it continues, which is what I'm the most interested in, what the you know main plot thread is going to be, what the main villain is going to be. I guess you just got to keep on getting it to find out, but that was a little bit strange for first issue. 
Really good writing though, pretty good artwork. I'd say overall, it was a really enjoyable issue and I recommend at least trying this first issue. If you like it, continue getting it. If you don't, I'd say it's worth dropping. It's probably not gonna be anything super special, but I think these creators will get better and better, especially the artist Corey Smith as the series goes on. So if you got some good information from this video or if you're new here, if you liked it, make sure to click that subscribe button down below. You can also hit the notifications bell, which is sitting right next to it. You'll be notified every single time I post a new video if you don't want to miss any. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Bye, guys.